Hello, and welcome to Making the Rounds, a podcast by the American Medical Association featuring advice, interviews, and discussions on the most important topics impacting residents' lives and careers. In this episode, Wes Cleveland, senior attorney with the AMA, shares his list of do's and don'ts for the interview and negotiation process. Wes has been a practicing attorney for the past 23 years and prior to joining the AMA, worked for the Texas Attorney General, the Texas Medical Association, and in private practice representing physicians. This episode of Making the Rounds is one in a six-part series on navigating contract negotiations from start to finish. Here's Wes Cleveland. Let's think about some do's and don'ts just in the whole interview process. These are kind of <clears throat> common sense, but you know, look at, think about your situation that you've been working as a resident, your life's been very regimented, you really haven't had any time to think about these things. So I think it's important just to kind of get your head around the interviewing process. And like I said, the, the AMA also has information more information about this they can share with you. But one of the common things, uh, common negotiation strategy uh, that I think you should be aware of and take advantage of is ask for more things than you really want. Let's say there's three things that you really care about. Maybe some flexible time, maybe you care about call, maybe you care about funding for CME, something like that. You want to go to a particular conference, you know, whatever those three things are. Well, okay, you know, once you enter into negotiations, I mean, you're going to be required to give something up. I mean, that's part of the negotiation process. So um, what people who are experts in negotiations suggest is that, you know, come up with six, seven things you'd like to have. You really care about those three, but say that you, you also care about four or five more, but not as much. So when you enter in the negotiation process with the potential employer, you can give those other things away in good faith as part of the negotiation process, and then hopefully settle on maybe the two or three things that are really important to you. Now, one of the, the next thing that I want to mention to you really is kind of the culmination of what we've been talking about before. Research your employer, okay? Go on the internet, find out what you can about them in the newspapers, you can go on hospital compare websites, you can go on to a physician compare, you know, look up some of the colleagues with whom you might be working, you can get on that AMA workforce mapper and get an idea of the geographic um, you can get an idea of some of the health status and characteristics of the, of the patients in the particular geographic market that you might be working in. But come in there, research the competition. Look, they're going to really be impressed if you've done your homework because that will tell them that you take the job seriously, you want to work there, and that you're a very serious person and thorough person you understand the organization and that you're going to be a really good business partner with that organization. Because remember too, though you are in a position, a good bargaining position because the country needs more physicians, right? It may also be the case that you're not the only candidate for the job. If you come in there with a wealth of information about the employer, and about the community that's serving that might be able enough to tip the balance in your favor if um, you're equally matched in terms of you and the other resident who's interested in working for that employer. Now, Now this is one mistake I made long ago is in negotiations don't make the first offer, okay? Whoever makes the first offer is oftentimes at a disadvantage. So uh, experts in negotiation uh, frequently suggest that to the extent you can, don't be the one who makes the first offer. Um, 
to the extent you can have the employer make the first offer. And then I would also, this, also say this, remember there is a physician shortage, so typically don't accept the first offer made to you, okay? If they're really interested in you, they, uh, the, they being the employer, um, will be willing to make a good offer to you. So again, kind of a universally recognized negotiation strategy is not to make the first offer and not to accept the first offer. And again, you know, if you're working with an expert who has expertise uh, in physician compensation and also access to some of the national surveys, um, that um, expert, again, you know, uh, I would say the attorney would be a good candidate, will help you determine what would be a good counter and a fair compensation amount uh, for your services in that area. Now, I used to get this answer, ask this question too, and this again was when I was in private practice. I'd review contracts and then the, the resident would say to me, you know, you know, will you negotiate this for me because, you know, I, I really don't, I, I'm uncomfortable negotiating it because I don't want the employer to get mad at me or I don't want the employer to, um, to think that I'm being difficult. Uh, look, the employer negotiates things all the time with a whole bunch of different kinds of people, with vendors, with its other officers, with other physicians. It expects you to negotiate. So, look, always be reasonable, okay? Don't be difficult, but push for what you want. And if you really, but always be ready. By not being difficult, I mean not being obstinate for any particular reason. Be reasonable when you ask for things. Have a reason for why you're asking for what you want. If you do that, um, that's going to make you look professional, and it's going to ultimately help you in negotiations. You know, to the extent the employer is going to be willing to negotiate a particular issue you're thinking about. Be flexible. Um, because you're not going to get everything you want, right? So, and that doesn't mean that you, quote, lost. Uh, there some, may be some things that the employer just may not negotiate as a matter of policy. But be flexible. Do your homework. Uh, don't lie. Don't bluff about other offers uh, when you don't have them at hand. If you get sniffed out on something like that, it's going to be really humiliating, and it's going to make you look bad and might lead the employer to say, well, you know, you haven't been entirely honest with us and we really not, don't like to bring uh, a person who hasn't been entirely honest with us on board. So uh, I think generally there is, can be a temptation sometimes to do that, but uh, generally I think experts in negotiations don't recommend that you do that. Uh, one thing I do get asked about frequently is, well, what if there's something that's really important to me and I'm not able to get it the first time around? Can I revisit it? And the answer is, look, you can negotiate anything, and so, but you might not be able to negotiate it right up front. So maybe what you could do in some instances, let's say there's something that's really important to you. I mean, maybe you're, maybe you're interested in maybe a little bit more flexible time, Maybe you want to engage in some substantial research projects, um, and initially the employer says, well, no, um, we have this standard procedure and we don't want to depart from it. There's nothing wrong with asking the employer to say, okay, look, I understand that, uh, um, but you know what, I, this is very important to me. I would like to revisit this. Can we have some good faith discussions and negotiations about a particular issue six months down the road, a year down the road, something like that? You can always negotiate that. And if you're one of their star performers, believe me, the employer will be interested in making sure that uh, you're happy with your arrangement. So there can always be an opportunity there. Yeah, like I said, I touched on this a little bit before, but don't be shy about negotiating. Okay, I know when you come out of residency you might be, but you have to understand this is the world that these people live in, whether it be a hospital or, a, you know, especially a larger physician practice. They, they expect this. 
Um, you know, you just want to conduct yourself professionally and reasonably, but they expect that. Uh, if someone, some employer, gets offended because you want to negotiate, uh, I would question whether that employer is someone you ultimately want to work for or not. A and look, if you yourself don't want to engage in negotiations because you're concerned that it might communicate some, some kind, maybe, maybe it'll make you, maybe you're sensitive about thinking that maybe it'll, it'll start things up on the wrong foot, you can always ask the lawyer to do it. And, you know, you can have the lawyer be the, quote, heavy and do some negotiations if, if you don't want to play that role. Now, it will cost additional money um, beyond what evaluating the contract itself, if that's the only thing you want the attorney to do, it will cost you a little bit more money. But, you know, that, wouldn't, that would be money that could be well spent, and you wouldn't get involved in sort of conflict on, of, uh, if you're concerned about um, putting off the potential employer or starting off on a wrong foot or something. I just know I've gotten a number of questions on that in the past. So that concludes our presentation today. And so uh, on a number of occasions, I've given you uh, references to some of the materials we have on the AMA website, um, which you can access if you're an AMA member. A couple of these really good website, uh, not web, uh, web resources are the uh, hospital model employment agreement and the group practice physician employment agreement access those, they are extremely detailed. So they're going to cover the issues I have discussed in greater detail and also additional points of interest that you may want to take a look at. So those are the resources. We also have AMA Principles of Employment. We also have a chapter uh, on physician employment agreements in a an ACO how-to manual that you can access. And if you have any trouble accessing any of these resources, you can just email me. And then we also have a JAMA Career Center that you can visit if you want. And then finally, if you want to take a look at these resources, I suggest you going to the following address, which is www.ama-assn dot o-r-g forward slash go forward slash employment. That was Wes Cleveland, Senior Attorney with a list of best practices to keep in mind during the negotiation process. Be sure to check out the other episodes in this six-part series about the ins and outs of contract negotiation. For more information on how to plan for your transition to practice, visit ama-assn.org slash career planning. You can also subscribe to Making the Rounds and other great AMA podcasts on iTunes and Google Play. Or visit ama-assn.org slash podcasts. Thanks for listening. <music>